Hello class. Welcome to the fall semester. This is Professor Gersbacher. Um, and in this short first video, um, um, we're just going to go over the syllabus uh, so that we know what we're doing um, this semester, which is really important since we're remote and it's online uh, and we're not meeting in person. Um, and we're also going to go through, uh, I'm going to show you the website um, and, uh, you know, just give you the nuts and bolts of, of the class. So in my email that you would have received, you, you'd be here already. Uh, you would have seen this website um, and you would have clicked to the syllabus tab. Um, and the video you're watching obviously is right here. And do uh, download the syllabus and, as a PDF and keep it on your uh, whatever device you archive your, your files. So we'll get back to that in a moment. But uh, please be aware that we have other tabs here that are going to be useful for you um, and not only useful, really necessary for the semester. So I guess the most important will be the lectures, uh, which are going to be under this tab. The first one uh, I'm going to post this Wednesday, and it will be due, the first real content, the first real work you have due is going to be due a, a week um, from our first class. So for today, we're just going over the website and the syllabus. So I'm going to post it on Wednesday on the 2nd, um, and you'll have almost a whole week to watch the lectures uh, and to work on the worksheet um, before before it's due um, uh, on, on, um, on that following Tuesday, on the 8th of September. So stay tuned uh, for that. Um, here are the assignments tab. Um, so we have the MoMA exhibition paper. We're going to get back to that uh, but I, did, I just wanted to show you how these, these tabs work. Um, it's very handy, uh, very simple. So why don't we go straight to the syllabus, because I think that's what we want to focus on most today. Uh, so this is early 20th century art, you know this. Uh, in U.S. and Europe, we will focus mostly on Europe, though we do touch on the U.S. Um, we are a uh, Tuesday class from 9 to 11, but we're, we're online, and this is going to be almost completely asynchronous. Um, so every week you're going to be able to work uh, at your own pace and on your own time, whenever suits your schedule best. So this is one of the nice things about uh, remote teaching and these online uh, formats. So the downside, of course, is that we have less discussion together, um, more is done over email, and through and, and, and online. Uh, but you know, the upside is it's nice. You get to work uh, again at your own pace and whatever suits your schedule best. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of classes. So um, hopefully this will work out well for you. So uh, there will be an office hour. If you do ever want to um, uh, say hello or have a question uh, on Fridays from four to five, I'm just gonna have an open Zoom. You'll get the invitation that morning um, every week when we have, um, uh, when we have class. And you can, um, if you have a, a concern or a question about the class or just want to run an idea by me, you'll be welcome to, to pop in at that point and, and, uh, and chat. Um, so we are going to be looking at, uh, this is just a very quick overview of the course. In some ways, we're starting like right at the beginning of the 20th century, and we end with the beginnings of, of World War II and the rise of fascism. Uh, and National Socialism in Germany. So that's more or less the parameters of the class. Um, and to keep this vi this video somewhat short, uh, I'm not going to go through the objectives, but please, please read them so that you know um, um, what we're hoping to gain uh, from, from this class. It's very much a straightforward class uh, in the sense that we look at very canonical movements, art movements of the early 20th century, especially the, the historical avant-garde. Um, so everything is very, very well known and very um, canonical. There is a chance for you just to wander a little bit and to um, go away from this sort of dominant um, art history, which is completely Western. Um, we're going to get to that when we talk about the MoMA exhibition paper. So that'll be one area where you'll be able to maybe explore or venture out um, and look at some movements or some artists that we just won't have time during the semester because this class is so much about the, the, the canonical and the, 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 the major movements and artists of the early 20th century. So uh, your required text is um, Art Since 1900. Make sure you're getting volume one. It's 1900 to 1944. 
Um, I will share with you the first reading. Um, I think I have scans of the second readings too, so just email me if you need uh, if, if you need those first readings while you're waiting for your book um, to, to get in. Uh, it's by Hal Foster and, and uh, three other authors. There are other uh, editions of it. I think there are now three editions. Uh, any of the editions will do. Um, I've set it up. I've set up this class so that uh, the readings will all overlap. Uh, the readings will all be there, even if you have the first edition, which now you can maybe find as a PDF, uh, inexpensive, maybe a used copy. So to, to help you out, um, that'll be um, that'll be the way we go. Uh, and a fair bit of warning about this. Um, this, this our, our required text, our textbook for the class. The readings are on the short side, but this is a, this is a challenging text. Um, it really goes deep, um, and it works with some with lots of different concepts and different theories. Um, so that's good. It's very rich, and it it's it, it it's really rewarding um, as far as um, being able to go in and patiently read. Uh, this text, but it is a difficult text. This is not like a surface level history where you just kind of get some information and then you move on to the next movement. Uh, that's not the way I teach and that's not the way I like to do um, art history or deal with all these important ideas that we'll be dealing with. Uh, these are all more or less deep dives and it will get into uh, difficult, difficult territory. So some of this will be challenging for you. Um, but the hope is that working together uh, and working with my lectures, they will help you with the readings. So the best thing to do, I would say, is to watch my lecture first on any given session, on any given week, and then go to the chapter. It'll help you read the chapter to have the images and the ideas in a more digestible, maybe hopefully easier to follow way in my lecture than the text presents it. So that, uh, you know, it'll really consolidate in your mind. That's the best way to do it. Though, of course, you're free to do it um, any way you like. You can read first and then um, and then watch uh, my lecture. Uh, that could work. That could work well, too, as a, force, a form of, of reinforcement. So moral of the story, um, it is a, a, a difficult, um, a challenging reading. OK, so uh, you have three requirements in this class. The first is attendance participation. Um, and this is in some ways very simple. Uh, your attendance is going to be de determined by submitting reading responses to the lectures. So again, um, every Wednesday, I will upload the next week's lecture along with a worksheet. Okay, And these will be due um, any time before or on the day of our scheduled session. So the lecture will be uploaded on Wednesday. It will be due the following Tuesday. Okay, so. If you get your response in on time um, and it looks like you've put in the work uh, and, and that this is a really good, these are good, really good responses, then your attendance participation grade, you get full credit, right? Um, if you don't turn it in on time, you're going to take a hit that week. Um, your attendance participation grade is going to go down, okay? But this is really important. Uh, you, you, absolutely want to turn in that reading response at some point. Um, if it's late, you're not going to get the attendance credit, but you have to get it in because look, your second requirement, these reading responses are 50% of your grade. Okay, So even if you're a day, a couple days late, even a week late, uh, you want to get it in um, more than a week, we're talking about, we're going to, you know, it's going to be a little tricky. You're going to have points taken off the reading response. But um, if you're just a few days late, for whatever reason, you might be busy and you couldn't just get it in on time, uh, that's okay. Your your 20% uh, attendance grade might go down a little bit. But this 50% of the reading response, I'm, I'm still going to grade uh, and I'm, I'm going to give you full consideration. Um, so keep in mind, notice what you're missing here. Right. Uh, this is a remote class. This is asynchronous. We're doing a lot of this through email. We have no quizzes or exams. Uh, I'm not going to give remote quizzes or exams in this class. Your exams are these reading responses. OK, so you have to take them very seriously um, and you have to give them good time and effort. Um, again, the readings are challenging. And I say this again in the reading responses here. These are these are challenging readings. So you have to be patient uh, with your reading. 
Uh, you might have to read some some stuff twice. Um, and you have to do a really nice job uh, re uh, with these worksheets, uh, these reading responses that are every week. And if you do, you're going to do really well in this class because this is 50% of your grade and these are essentially your exams. So think of this class as uh, weekly essays, weekly responses that you're... Um, that you're working on in relationship to the material, in relationship to my lectures, and in relationship to those week's chapters. Um, so don't, don't you don't have to worry about any exams or anything like that in this class. Uh, you're you're becoming a writer and a responder throughout throughout the semester. And again, this can work really well because this can all be on your own time. Um, I know a lot of students. I've had a lot of students who work during the week. And then it can be really tough on a Tuesday class, right? Especially a Tuesday class at nine. Um, so for those students, they would often uh, work in the evenings or on the weekends, right? And they would get their reading responses uh, finished uh, in time for Tuesday's class on the weekend. So this takes some planning, uh, but it can be it can be very nice uh, depending on what your schedule is like. Okay, so that's seventy percent of your grade. Attendance participation. If you're constantly on time, um, if you if you um, write me an email with uh, with um, with your response attached, uh, everything is formatted right, and you know you you send me a pleasant uh, email. Some students uh, just like put in an attachment and then just send it off without even saying anything. Um, that's not really great form in a professional setting, especially with a professor. You want to say. You know, hi professor. Here's my response for this week. Uh, you know, take care. Have a nice weekend, or whatever it is, right? Um, in a professional setting, you always want to have something in your email, especially when you're sending um, an, an, an attachment. Um, and make sure you're going to see. I'm going to give you these worksheets as Word documents, so you'll work in the Word document. Uh, but make sure you name them correctly with your name and make sure you turn them into a PDF before you send them off, before you turn them into me before that, that, that Tuesday. Um, that's a big help for me because I have an archiving system, uh, a way of organizing where if everything is regimented, if everything looks is, is the same aside, of course, from your, your names changing, then it really helps me out. So please remember to do that. Okay, and then the last thing, which should be a little bit more fun, a little bit more free, is the MoMA exhibition paper. So we're going to make full use of this online resource uh, at MoMA. Yes, the museum's just opened, uh, just reopened, but uh, I don't want to make any students go to museums. Uh, that doesn't seem that doesn't seem uh, like the right thing to do just yet this semester. Um, so we're going to be using their online archives, which are really amazing. Uh, and you're going to choose an exhibition from MoMA, from its history, that has to do with the movement around, you know, around our dates from 1900 to 1944. Uh, but I really encourage you to choose an artist or a movement that we're not really touching on in class, because this assignment will then allow you to sort of wander to another, another domain, another place. Um, like some of the things we're not going to be looking at because of time is like the history of photography. There's some incredible photography that happens in the early 20th century. Um, we're not going to talk about the Harlem Renaissance, um, unfortunately. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, a few other movements in the United States, just because um, the, the, the canonical movements that we have to cover in, uh, in a U.S. and Europe course, um, they just take up, um, they've, they've taken up all our time. And even there, we haven't looked at everything. Um, so we always have to uh, pick and choose during a semester. So for this one, I really encourage you to go out and and find a movement that you know uh, uh, maybe you're you're not happy that that uh, the course that we didn't get to it. So you get to get to it, and you get to work on it. Um, I would be like that, um, but all these courses are are set up in a way that can be somewhat limiting. Okay, uh, when we go back to the website, I'll show you the, this assignment real quick. It'll make more sense. Academic integrity, this is really important because there's a lot of writing that you're going to be doing in this class. So um, always be honest, always do your own work. Never ever plagiarize. Um, unfortunately, I just taught this over the summer um, and one student had just basically like lifted uh, um, um, lifted text from, from a website. It's so easy to find. It's so easy to see and it's so easy to Google. 
just never ever plagiarize. Always just turn in something late rather than plagiarize. Uh, because if you turn in late, we might get a couple points off, but if you plagiarize, it's very likely you're just gonna get a zero, right? So just, just always be honest, um, always do your own work. Um, and reach out to me if, if you have an issue. Reach out to me if, if like, uh, one week things are crazy and you just need a little bit more time. I may very well just be nice and let you know, yeah, no problem, just turn it in tomorrow, right? So um, um, just never take recourse to using other people's work. Okay, if you need any accommodations in the class, um, email the Accessibility Center, um, and they'll, they'll, they'll coordinate things with, uh, with me. Um, I will also say... Uh, so the lectures that you're watching on a weekly basis, they're they're on a YouTube um, a channel. They're they're on my YouTube channel, my teaching channel, which I then embed into the website. So you can use the closed caption if you ever uh, can't understand what I've said, or if you ever if there's any issue with the with the the sound, uh, you can always use closed closed caption. Um, and I just recorded these lectures uh, last month, and I know that the first one. I, I wasn't completely used to my mic, so I think my mic was on the wrong setting. So it's a little low that first, uh, the first, uh, the first session. So maybe that you know, for some of you, you might have to turn it really like far up or um, um, like I did, or uh, or use closed captioning if that if that helps. Okay, okay. So the second page is the schedule and the readings. Uh, this is our website, which you already know about. You you you've gotten to it. Uh, this of course is to today. Um, uh, syllabus and class themes, um, um, which we've we've talked about a little bit. Then starting next week, um, the, you will have our will have our first uh, our first session, and I will upload these two readings to the website for you, so that you have plenty of time. Um, I may very well just upload these two as well, um, along with the lectures, um, so that you know you get plenty of time if if. Let's say September twenty second is your deadline to, to get a, a you know like a an affordable copy of our textbook. That should be plenty, plenty of time. Okay, um, and each reading, again they're short but demanding. Uh, and each reading is based off of a off of a um, a date. Um, so nineteen A, the A means that there's more than one nineteen hundred chapter. So you want to read the nineteen A chapter which is about the Vienna Secession. Um, and then you also want to read the 1906 chapter, which is on Fauxism, which is on Matisse, okay? Um, and then those are the readings for, for, for that week, and so on and so forth, right? When we go to primitivisms, we want to read 1903 and 1907, so on and so forth, right? Um, and so we go, we go like this throughout the, the semester, and we look at all the major movements of the early 20th century. Cubism, of course, is important. De Blau Ryder, we look at futurism. We talk about the October Revolution. Uh, we look at Dada, surrealism, um, up through the machine aesthetic of Bauhaus, purism, and precisionism. We look at new objectivity. We look at Mexican muralism. We look at the Soviet realism. And then we end uh, with national socialism, um, and the rise of, of Hitler and Nazism in, in Germany. Um, so that's the lay of the land, right? The, every, then every week you're going to be watching, uh, you're going to be reading these texts, watching the lectures that I prepare for you, uh, that I've prepared for you, that go along with these readings, and then turning in your worksheets, right? Every, every week. Then on top of that, you're also working on your MoMA exhibition catalog, uh, MoMA exhibition paper. Um, and we have a couple, this is a scaffolded assignment. So on October 13th, I want to hear what your exhibition is. Uh, you'll have want to have chosen your exhibition by then, okay? Um, so start thinking about what's not on this list. Um, then, and, you know, an artist or a movement that you'd like to work on. Uh, so then start, uh, start thinking about uh, start thinking about that for, for a theme, for, for an exhibition. Uh, on November 10th, I'll want an annotated bibliography of your MoMA exhibition. Uh, so let's say you've chosen to do the Harlem, Harlem Renaissance. Like, you, you, you want to work on an exhibition that had to do with Harlem Renaissance. That would be uh, the exhibition you tell me about in October on 13th. You say, I'm going to do this exhibition that was on the Harlem Renaissance. Then on November 10th, you will have... I don't know, maybe three, four, five different um, sources that you'll have read that in some ways bear on your exhibition. Um, 
and you'll have a bibliography and with like for each one about a paragraph or so telling me what that source is all about that's what an annotated bibliography is so this is giving you a leg up um, and in some ways sort of forcing you to get the research going um, because this will then be very helpful for your your exhibition paper uh, which when then will be due on December 15th okay so the last day this is the this is the day of the final exam there is no final exam in this class the final exam will be your uh, MoMA exhibition paper now I said that this whole class we would be running asynchronously uh, and we're doing it through uh, my uh, my video lectures and through email but there will be one day I had to make sure I wanted to make sure that we actually see each other in person at some point for so December 8th um, that will be a zoom session there is no new content for that that will be you know like a fun group zoom session where everybody uh, will be able to share their screens and we'll be able to show some images about the exhibition they chose and that they're they're writing on and tell us you know some of the things you like about it what's interesting why you chose it um, and what the, what the show was all about right okay so that's the the lay of the land that's the uh, the syllabus I hope it's all clear let me just show you one more thing because I want to keep this first uh, video short because you know the protocols of the class are important but Let's be honest, this is a bit boring. Um, assignments, go to the assignments tab. Again, let me just show you again. Lectures, uh, this Wednesday I'm gonna upload the shock of the new Vienna Secessionism. Oh, and Fauvism, um, I'm gonna correct that. Fauvism also has to be part of September 8th. Uh, that's just a typo. So that'll all be available starting this Wednesday. And you have all week, almost until that Tuesday um, to work on it. Okay, but let's go to assignments just the last thing so I can show you um, so here you have your MoMA exhibition paper and the guidelines for it so just like the syllabus you want to click on it and there you are uh, I'm not gonna go in and read all of this because uh, this will end up being way too long uh, but please read this carefully because I've done um, a somewhat meticulous job trying to explain this uh, assignment to you um, and I've given you a lot of advice and suggestions please do not treat this as a formula that you just plug in um, you want to be somewhat creative whenever you write uh, but make sure you are um, following the guidelines and providing more or less what what's being asked for right and then there's also a grading rubric which is helpful for you um, to, to take a look at but I did want to show you uh, well this PDF but then also your starting point so MoMA's done an incredible job let's go ahead and uh, um, let's go ahead and put that in the browser um, here is the MoMA website um, and th this link sends you straight to their exhibition history archive and so what you would do and it's amazing uh, so they already have like lots of the most recent ones they put up um, um, who might we pick um, oh I had a number of students do this one last semester I think I now know why just because it was the first one uh, so don't do that <laughs> choose you know actually go out and try to find something that interests you don't just click on the first thing and then go with that um, that can be you know not 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 all that much um, but um, you know who might be what might we pick here um, let's go with what about these murals this is from 1932 this is probably a contemporary show yeah so if you were interested in, in, in murals um, and we are going to talk about Mexican muralism which had a big influence on Amer American painters and muralisms you would you would choose this um, or you could choose this and it's incredible they give you if it's old enough if it's out of copyright they will give you the catalog they'll give you press releases and you have all well this one only has two but a lot of times you have lots of installation images uh, you have all the artists that were in it you have everything you need to start working on a paper um, th that that explains and that um, talks about um, this uh, this exhibition uh, but again my, my example from before was what Harlem Renaissance right and so let's see what comes up with that uh, they had two um, wow that's too bad 
Well, it's only had two. And so, but this is a good example because this is from 2010, 2011, um, which seems to not involve hormone renaissance. Um, so that's that's unfortunate. So one of the things you'd want to do if you're interested in hormone renaissance, you might have to search by by the artist, um, which I won't keep doing because we don't want to take too long here. Uh, but you get you get the idea. This is a wonderful archive of all these exhibitions from from MoMA um, that you'll then write about um, and do an exhibition history for this class, which can be um, a lot of fun. So here's another one and see how many um, installation works, like installation shots there are, which will help you a lot in writing about an exhibition. Okay, I'm going to get out of this website and then... Uh, there we are. I think I've given you the whole overview of the class. Uh, email me if you have any questions. Uh, my email is on the, the PDF, so it's right here. Um, um, and I should have said before, if you can't make, if you do have a question any one week, uh, but you can't make the Zoom for whatever reason to ask that question, email is great too. Um, almost any question can be answered over email, and I'm usually pretty prompt in responding. Okay, everyone. Really nice to meet you um, over this first... Uh, yes, somewhat boring um, uh, video covering the syllabus, but hopefully everything will become much more interesting for you in the next video where we actually go back into the history and start talking about all, all, about all these all wonderful movements of the early uh, 20th century. Until then, take care.